Well, good afternoon. Uh, good, not, good evening, guys. Uh, we're going to talk about, give you some exercise. Remember last time when we talk about, you know, uh, you can see my screen, correct? Yes? Yes. Yes, we can see the good. screen. Yes, All right. Yes. So we talked about last time. So we have an aneurysm here. And uh, I mentioned that last time. So remember, guys, what we said we have to do. Um, we said first thing we're going to get the, the neck just below the renal, the sides. We get it here, okay? And then we get the distance. And this should be at least 10 and above, more than 10. At least 10, more than 10. Then we measure the distance from the renal to bifurcation. It's very important because this tells me where is the contractile limb is going to open. If it's less than eight centimeters, that means the limb will open in the iliac, which is not good. So you need to, to be at least more than eight centimeters. We need to measure the iliac bifurcation here to be sure that the two limb will fit here. It's not narrow. I think you said at least we need 18 to 20 millimeters. Then we measure the iliac here in three bases, in the entrance, middle, and the bifurcations. And the reason why we do three, because we don't know where our stent will be land here or here or here or there. So, so we need to know where it's landing. And then we measure the distance from bifurcation to the bifurcation here, because we need at least three centimeters. So if you have less than three, it's too short, this will not fit. And the same we do for the other one, two, three, and also we measure the distance here. Okay. And then the last thing we have to measure is the external iliac artery in both sides because to see if it uh, will fit the device or not, because it could be very narrow or calcified. And we said it has to be at least above seven millimeters, depending on what device we use, but at least we need at least seven millimeters, you know, healthy artery to fit the device in. Otherwise, you have to use a candidate. So that's it. It's, it's very simple. So when you order the main device, you have to give them oversize how much the first, I give them three number. The first one be the proximal neck, what size you pick up. Second one is the distal, the iliac diameters here. And the third one will be the length, okay? And the contractor limb, the same thing, you have to give them three number, but and the first number all will be 16, so we don't have to worry about it because contractor limb is always 14. So you always you start with 16. Then the next number, the iliac size here, we use the second number here. And the third number will be the length. But as we said, remember last time when we measure the lengths, it has to take five centimeter from the lengths because when you put a device here, this way, you see the contralateral limb is going to start from here. Okay, it's going to go down. All right, so it's going to go down, sorry. So the contralateral limb is going to go all the way like that, okay? So you're not gonna start from the renal. So you have, and this is the distance from the renal to the, this, this is called a flow divider. There's a flow divider here, where the second stent start, we have five centimeters. So we have to take it out from the calculation on the left side, on the, on the left side, what are the contractor side. So the renal to the bifurcation, 200, then we have to take 50. So what we need, we need here 150. If it's like, you know, 120, take 50, so it'll be 70. So don't forget. And the epsilateral, no, we take the whole length. On the epsilateral, if the renal, 100 to, from the renal to the bifurcation 150, then we need 150 devices. But on the contralateral, at the same lengths, we don't take 150. We take 150 minus 50, it'll be 100 cc, 100 uh, millimeter. Okay? So I think that's all. And as I said, guys, if you want, this is the IFU. The IFU for the neck, uh, it should be at least, you know, between a 20 to 30 or 28. 30, you can do 30, but prefer not to go 28. The more you go more than 28, it will fit, but high chance of type one in Dolly because the large one, largest one we have 36. 
So, so up to 30 is acceptable because 20% will be 36, but like 31, 32 is too big. So the maximum you can go 28 to 30. Uh, and uh, iliac, the maximum you can go like 24 because the large one we have 28. So 24 is the maximum you can go. Um, what else? I think that's all. Any question guys before we start some practice at this point? No question? Okay. Clear, uh, Doc, so. Okay, no problems. I'm going to start my uh, share now with the second beta. We have a central line, so we can do, uh, where is the share? Share. <sighs> Let's see if we can get anything open, join. Okay, uh, got it. Now it's going to be the audio. All right, so here's the share. Uh, can you see the screen? No, you still see my screen. I have to stop sharing. Okay. Uh, I don't take the patient name. Okay. So first guys, we open it like that. We get the, you know, the CD. You download it to the central line. And then the moment you get that, you press on this one and will turn blue. This will take the whole device. Ah, what can I do here? Okay. You see guys, this part is not blue here. So we have to add, called add vessel. So we add vessel and we compress this one. We put a mark here. This will turn it to blue. Okay, so everything blue. Now we could confirm this way. Then we put a line here from here. Bifurcation here and there. And then we see next. And then this will do a central line for us, okay? Sometimes you have to fix center lines. So you look at here, this number, so maybe be sure it's in the middle. If it's like, you know, this one looks good. It's a contralateral here, then it looks fine. Confirm. Okay. Then we come to the node here. Oh, we have, sorry. So now we have to pick up the template. This is Metronic. So it'll be uh, indolent to select. Okay, so now I have it here, put it here. So again, they need the D1, which is the neck proximal, distal, the links, all we talk about it, okay? So the first thing you have to see what called a baseline, where you're going to start. So you go up here, I'm moving here and you look here at this area here. Where is the renal? This is the celiac, uh, SMA. This is the renal. This is the lower renal here. So, this is a, so the left is the lower. So we start from here. Okay. So here we say this is the baseline, we make it zero. Move baseline here. So now it becomes zero, okay? Then we measure here. Let's do here. You see guys here, you have to measure from outer to outer. Like you don't see a clot here. So you have to measure the whole thing. So we start from here up to here. And you see the haziness area here. This is the difference between systolic and diastolic because remember, the water is a mobile, is changed with systolic and diastolic. 
So when the cuts can happen, it could be between them to give us haziness, you know? So you do this one, you take it AB, outer to outer. You get the number here. Let me move this one. So the average is 24 almost. So you put this one and we do D1, we call it, we put an average. So D1 is 24. All right. Then we go back here. We go down until we see the aneurysm. But you see, like the aneurysm, it doesn't happen like here, but it's 26. We don't need, we need at least 15 millimeter neck. So this is, so we have to measure not in 26 too far. We measure where is the 15, because this is the minimum we need. So let's go to our two centimeters. This is 15 here, 12, 13, 15 here. Okay. I'll measure now the aorta here. Again, we take two from here, there. Uh, from here, outside to here, and we get about 30. Average, we get the 30. It's like a conical neck. See, this is a problem with this one, you know, it's a tough case. Uh, okay. And this is, yeah, let's go like here at 10. Let's see at 10, what's that 10? This is 10. Let's see how much at 10. Ten will be twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Yeah, it's almost. Correct. Yeah, it was about twenty-eight. So let's change it to. So twenty-eight. All right, you see, this is the neck. This one here, you see, this one here, about 20, 27. This is a ceiling zone, not the neck. Neck only the 10 centimeter or 15. Now this is a ceiling zone, which we said that the cleft can touch the aorta, but it's not good overlap, uh, oversize. Like, give you an example. Um, well, let's, we talk that at the end. Let's go back, so at 10, this is a 10 or 15. So with the links, the links is L1, we call it L1. So if you look here, it came back 15, the neck. The second thing we need to measure all the way to aortic bifurcation. Bifurcation is here, so we stop here. It's 104, so we call it an L2. It's L2. It's a distance from renal to bifurcation. And this is important for the contractor limb. I said we need at least 80, this 100, so this is good. Second thing, we need to measure the aortic bifurcation to be sure that both limbs will fit. So we measure it here. And it's about 23, which is good. We call D2. No, sorry, that D2 is the aneurysm. Uh, we call D3. Okay, this is a bifurcation here. So it's more, I think, more than 20 is acceptable. So that means we don't have any problems with bifurcation. Now we start with the iliac on the right side. We start with the entrance here at the first part. We measure it. You don't need to do it twice. You can do just one, one time like that from here to here. It's about 10. So this we call DR here. This is a 10. Then we measure it in the middle, like here. For the measurement. Uh, it's about 13, 14. And then, then at the bifurcation. Here's a bifurcation. So we measure it here. Is that a bifurcation? And this will be around. There's about 13. Okay. Uh, what I forgot is that we need to measure the iliac. So what happened, we go to where we did the aortic bifurcation here, this is the aortic bifurcation here. We called second baseline. We, we called set second baseline. So when I go to the iliac bifurcation here, I measure from the second baseline, which is iliac, measure from the second baseline. And this is the uh, length of the iliac, which is uh, L3 right. So I have an iliac 80 here, okay? Then also we have to measure the external iliac for the device if it fit or not, as we talked before. 
So let's see here how big it is. It's about nine centimeters, so this is good. So this is here, this is the X in it here, okay? Then we go to the left, this is the right, this is the left. So now we got the left here. So let me move this one to here so we can see. So again, here we don't have to start from above, we start from the iliac because the left side, we just need to see the iliac. So this is the iliac on the left side. Let me move this one out. And it is about 11, the R2, 11. Then we continue, oh, sorry. Then we got the middle, like here. We measure it again. About 12. Okay. And the last thing we want to do is a bifurcation. So we go down until we get to the iliac bifurcation, which is here, just above it. Here. So we measure it again here, the bifurcation. And this will be around. Oh, sorry, I don't think it's correct. Let me do it this way. That's about 30. Okay. And the last thing we want to measure the external iliac on the left side. Oh, before we go there, sorry. Let's before we go here, we need to measure the, the links from bifurcation to iliac bifurcation. So we press here, we say measure from the second baseline, second baseline and the aortic bifurcation. So this one. And this gives us the L3, which is the length of the iliac on the left side was 81. And now we go to the external iliac. We measure it here. Let's get something like rounded. Okay. It's about again. This is this uh, external iliac. All right, that's all. So we get all the numbers. The number in the middle is, uh, we didn't measure, this is aortic aneurysm. It's not important, but it's for, if you want to do it, you can do it. Uh, this is the aneurysm size here. So you can be sure you fill up all the numbers so you know what size dealing with it. This is like 54. Maybe something, I don't know. The 51 D2. So this is will be D2, this one. All right, so we have all the numbers now. So we look at the report here, they just press it, it gives you the report. So the report said this is the neck, proximal distal, this is the links, this is bifurcation, our bifurcation, the iliac three times, the distant, external iliac three times. Uh, common iliac, external iliac as a distance, okay? This on the right side from the renal to bifurcation, we have 184. And from the left side from renal to bifurcation, we have 185, all right? So let's say now how we're going to start, who's going to now volunteer to give us some sizing? Let's start with the first number. What's the next diameter we need to use? Maybe 32, doctor. Why? Tell me what, how did you get this number? So we have the 24, 28. The uh, medium is 26 okay. or diameter. Okay. 26, if you want to upgrade it to 20%, there is no 30 in Medtronic. That's so you have 20, to go to 20% plus 26. We'll get like 31.2. Yes. 32 would be perfect. Yes. This is one way. So what you did, you took the you took the average 26 and yes. you time. The other option you can do, you can do 24 times 20%. Yes. 24 times 20% 20 plus 24. You get about 29. Mm. And you get the 28, 15% times 15% plus 28. You get 32.2. Okay. Yes. 32.2. And the other one is 28, you see? 
but you need mm -hmm. at least 15 percent. So you have to go with 32 because less than yeah. then and special 15. But even even 32 for 24 is about 25 percent, which is acceptable. I think up to 30 percent acceptable. 24, 24 times 3 percent, 30 percent plus 24. You get no, sorry, 24 times 30 percent plus. 24 times 30 percent plus 24 31.4 so like almost 30 percent oversighting and remember most of the time what second thing you have to look yeah is you do the, the measurement why is that because remember guys this is in perfect life you know in real life you're not going to land here no way in the reno you're going to go below the reno so really you can start landing is not here you're going to land here you know, because because the contrast and the angulation, everything's you know, because look at that. If you're in the AP, look at how the device is moved, is not 100% perpendicular, you know. So you may not see that it's a renal. So almost you're going to lose the reason why we need at least 10, 15. So usually I move it a little bit down to the renal, you see, like in the middle, like five, and then I'll take the size, and this will be real where my ceiling, you know. So if you look at this one here. This is where I think the, the good thing will happen here. We get the here and then you get this one. And we get like 28 or 27. So I think we need 32. I agree. If you go 28, it will, will be very, very short and soft. Okay. So we, are, we agree with 32. All right. This is the first number. Second number, we need to go to the area. Either we have 10, 14, and 13. So what do you think number we need to use? 14, what do you use for 14? How much do you are there? Continue. You started. 16, Dr. Elia. Right, and 13 is 16. All you need to the number. As you said, we have 13, 16, 20, 24, 26, 28, okay? Yes. So 13, 12 and 13, you have to go to the 16. Mm. Then 11, you can go to 13. Mm. 14, you're going to go to 16. 10, you need to go to 13, you know? Yes. So, but 13 will be short because like 13, 14. So I think I'll go with 16, okay? So now yes. the length. The, the length is uh, what, 184. If you look at me trying, the longest one, they have 166, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's see if one one sixty six. How how many how many centimeters are inside the iliac? Is it enough or not? Uh, you will be so out for uh, for six centimeters inside the iliac. Yeah, so this is good. So yes. we don't need an extension because you have hundred oh uh, one four to the iliac bifurcation, right? Yeah. You see, you have from here to here one oh four. So use 166, that means you have six centimeter inside here and 80. So you're going to land here. Six centimeter is more than enough, you know? If mm -hmm. it was this one, like one, let's say one, uh, 140, then only have, you know, two centimeters then be short. Then you have to put mm -hmm. an extent, okay? So yeah. this one would be 32, 16, 166 from the right side. And the iliac looks 10. So I don't think we have any issue with the area because both looks good, all right? Yes. All right. Uh, then we got the contractor limb. Let somebody else give me contractor limb. So this is the limb. Let me pick up somebody. Oh, where is the list? Who is here with us today? Unless somebody volunteer. Mm -hmm. The sun is here. The sun. Len, hello, Doctor. Are you hiding? Okay. What the contractor let me want, sir? First? Uh, 104 plus. Yeah, just a second. No. We did it yeah. from here. Now, contractor limb. From the contractor limb, from the application, 185. Okay. Yeah. So, first, we have to take out how many? 50. Uh, 50 millimeters, okay. 5 centimeters. So, that means 135. <clears throat> 135, yes. Correct. Okay, yeah. at least uh, as we said always, any 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 device has three numbers. The first number is approximate, and we said approximate 15, correct? Yeah. So the first number will be 16, and always the contractor limb is 14, so this is 16. 
Yeah. Read the second number. It's 11, 12, 13. <coughs> 12, 12, 11. So I got yeah. 16. 12, 16 as well, yes. Uh, not really. <laughs> this one I will use uh, 13. Uh, the reason why it is it's small. And the second thing, look at the entrance is 11. So it's tight, you know? Mm. Uh, so I think 16 is not wrong. But I think 13 will, will work better, you know. Uh, but you can go either way, but most probably I will go with uh, with uh, 13. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, especially in 11, so 13 is good. 12 is like at the borderline, 13. 16 maybe too big. Like the other one is 14, 13 is okay. But 12, 11, I think 13 will work better. If the entrance was 12, no, I think most probably I will go to 16 to get be sure I get good seal. But because the entrance mm -hmm. is 11, then most of it I'll go with 13. But both way you'll be fine. I mean, it's not a mistake to tell me 16, okay? Oh. So let's say 16, 13. What about the links? We have 135. 135. Yeah. The size, they come 82, 93, 124, 156. So we're going to take 124. 124, yes. Yeah, because 156 is long. Mm -hmm. So 154. How much we have in the common iliac? Uh, low, low stamina, 126. Well, uh, no, no, 124, yeah. okay, control the limb. Control the yeah. limb, you can use 124, correct? Yeah. Well, 20, two, uh, 20 ml, 20, two centimeters will be in the common iliac, which is short. No, we have to use... a mistake, no. You missed something. <clears throat> Now we'll start from the floor divider, three centimeter. Correct. Correct. So uh, from Aorta, it's not 104, it's only 50. Correct? Yeah. Because the first 50 is no, we're not starting from the arena, we're starting below five centimeter. 50 plus. Okay. Now Aorta, contractor limb, it's not 104, it's 54. Yeah. Okay. 54. Ah, oh, yeah. The, the remaining length will be in the common yeah. area. Yeah. So, how much be in common area now? <clears throat> so, you don't um, take 24 one, from 104. You take 124, the links we have it. From 50. 54 or 50. Yeah. So, that will be fine. Seven, uh, 70 so will be area. almost 70 in the common area. Yeah. So that's that's good. more than enough. Okay, so that's good. So we need 124, will look perfect. Okay, so you get in these two sides, will be perfect. Again, 326166 and 1613124, I think we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do fine. Yeah. Should go from the right or left side. I mean, you can go both way here, but uh, let me know what you also have to look. We're going to talk about contractal cannulation, look at the aneurysm. Like here, this is easy one. You see the limb, you see how the wire to wire, are, are going to do ballerina or no? <coughs> ballerina or normal? No, normal will be fine. Normal, because you see two wires is going up, parallel to each yeah. other. So yeah. we're not crossing each other, so we don't need to do ballerina, okay? Yeah. And it's better to go from the right or from the left? I will stage. go from the right. Why? <laughs> that? Uh, because the curve is more and the... Uh, right side. Right, you see the bulge here. You see the bulge here? It's more yeah. on the right. So if you put the divide from the left, the contractor limb will be in the right, then you have a big space here, maybe difficult to cannulate, you see? Yeah. But if you go from the right, uh, from the right, then the, the contractor limb will be here, it would be, you know, like a narrow area, so it'll be easy to cannulate it, you know? Yes. This is one trick we can talk about, yeah. it, you know? Um, so the second thing you have to look, guys, to look at the CT in 2D because you want to see if there's any uh, big numbers just to look for type 2 in the league. Uh, so we do that after you finish all the things. Let me just... Uh, it's not moving there. I think screen is not moving there. Yeah, your screen is not moving. Anyway, so you have to look for the IMA and for lumbers. Uh, if the IMA is big, 
Uh, sometimes it's better to uh, coil it before procedure. And really, we do that. But uh, if it's a really big, sometimes, you know, we do that. If it's lumbar, it doesn't matter. But it just gives you an idea. If you get type 2 endoleak, you know why you get type 2 endoleak. Uh, some, some people, they advocate to do uh, prophylactic uh, lumbar um, embolization, but nobody proved that it really works. All right. Any question about measuring, guys? Anyone? We have too many people in the meeting. Any questions? And again, there's no bad question, guys. Any question is very valuable. So anything come to your mind, just let me know. Yes. How we measure it from outer to outer, uh, or how to how to uh, put the measure proper in the appropriate way? Put it to the I didn't understand. Sorry. Was the question your your connection? Can you hear me now? If I have I uh, circumferential you. calcification around uh, calcification all around the wall uh, or the external iliac or the common iliac or even at the aortic bifurcation. When I do the measures, uh, do I measure from outer to outer and uh, what to do in such condition to avoid the rupture and what would be the appropriate uh, size uh, sizing? That's good questions. Uh, when I deal with that, uh, you see, this measurement, we need just to know how the limbs go inside, you know, so you don't have to be an accurate 10 percent different from the neck, you know, neck, you have to be exactly how much the size, but when you talk about the iliac or the aortic bifurcation, you just want to see how the limb is going to be tight area or not. So now in, in the, uh, if you have a circumferential calcification, no, I measure inner to inner because this is where we're going to, uh, uh, the limb, uh, sit. But let's say it's from inner to inner like 17 and outer to outer is 20, I still fine with me because I can dilate it, you know. Uh, the same for the iliac artery. Uh, always, if, if it's circumferential, it's a problem. If it's not circumferential, you do it in an area where there's no, uh, let me show you, I think we have it here, where there's no, let me see if I can go down. Like here, you see? Let me make it bigger for you guys. Like here, you see calcification. Okay. You see this calcification here. Okay. So I don't take this one. I take the area where it's a soft area because you can measure this way or this way. So in this way, instead of confusing with the, with the calcification, I measure it this way where there's no calcification from here to here, which is 10. Because if you measure it here, be sort of very confused. Should I stop as you said here, or should I stop step here? You know. Uh, but most probably, if it's a compression, you just go the inner lumen because this is what's going to hold the device. So if you are talking about the iliac and aortic bifurcation uh, and and circumferential uh, calcification, I measure from inner to inner. If it's partial calcification, I measure in the soft area where there's no calcification. Any other question? And if we have circumferential calcium uh, all around the neck, uh, then how would you measure it? Inner to inner also? Uh, I mean, it depends. You have to look at many, many factors, you know. First, I mean, circumferential calcification, it's almost out of high view, you know. So you have to look at your case. And with the neck, as I said, you can go out of high view, but one parameter, not more than that. Like, I cannot accept calcification with a short neck. I cannot accept calcification with a lot of thrombus. I will not accept calcification with a severe angulation. But straight long neck with calcification, I think I can get away with it. Uh, yes, usually I will go as inner to inner, but I oversize at least 20, 25%. So I really, really need a good uh, oversizing, you know. But again, as I said, guys, don't have two out of view uh, parameters, otherwise you can get to trouble. If the neck is not circumferential calcification, no, I measure outer to outer area where there's no calcifications. Because calcification then doesn't matter because the water will dilate it. The only time I worry when it's circumferential, because you cannot dilate the water, then you have to take inner to inner. But if it has partial calcification, 
then you take outer outer in the area where it's soft. As we said, like here, as we mentioned here, you don't like this, it's like partial calcification, then you measure from here to here, see in the soft area. And the same if you have a neck, this aortic neck, I will not measure here outer. I take from here to soft to soft area and I measure it. And then I go with this number. And again, guys, always go to oversize. Don't be scared of oversize. Only problem you get to trouble when you, you want new downsides. So don't get afraid of 20 size, 20, 25%, even up to 30%. More than 30 would be too much. Uh, so 20, 25 is very acceptable. Any other question? Uh, okay. This one needs a meeting. Okay, guys. So let's talk about contractile gate cannulation. We only have 15 minutes. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh, where is it? Uh, this one. Don't see it. Oh. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Let me see. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, clear. Okay, so then try control the gate cannulation during uh, T-VAR. So I'll give you some tips and tricks. Why is that important? This is a time consuming really uh, part of the procedures because all the part of procedure, if you do a calculation correct, it doesn't take that, it's just straightforward. So only time which is unpredictable is connection contractor limb. And I see it happen from five minutes, some people go for an hour. My advice, you should not go more than 20 minutes. You have to uh, time yourself. 20 minutes, if the, you cannot cannulate, go for contract, go for other way to cannulate. But don't keep trying same place, like from the same site, one, two, three, more than 20 minutes. If it doesn't go, then you have to go break it or go somewhere else or contract a limb or whatever, okay? Uh, could be difficult when you have a large aneurysm with little thrombus. This is the most difficult part. You have a huge aneurysm, little thrombus because you are big space and you see the 3D and you try to cannulate in a 2D view, which is very, very difficult. Uh, sometimes when you have a narrow also become very difficult because you have no space. And a narrow vertical bifurcation also could be a problem and severe angulation. So we're gonna give you some tips and tricks. Tip number one. Let's say this sack of the, this part of the aneurysm. Should we go from the right or from the left? Main body from the right side. Correct. Because what happened if you go from the left like that, what's going to happen? You're going to struggle. Imagine you're going to get through this here, the neck, first angulation, then look at big space here. So it will be very difficult to go through this one and cannulate it. So it will be there for hours. Where if you just go from the right, it becomes so simple. You see how it goes? It was very simple. So you're just planning ahead of time, it makes your life much easier. Yes. Instead of spending hours here, it takes five minutes in this area. Okay? That'll be very easy. Next one, angulation neck, like that. Again, should go from the right or from the left? This is the habit here. Oh, I give it to show. So if you go from right or left, what do you think? <clears throat> from the left side. Correct. Because if you go from the right, what's going to happen? Um, the limb will the be in same, that uh, yes, uh, the angle. That's going to happen. So the limb will be against the wall. So it'll be very hard to cannulate, you know? If you go from the right, from the left, then the neck will jump up and go with that. So the angulation will be up. It will be very hard. Sometimes it could be inside the clot. Then it would be very hard for you to cannulate it, you know. Or if you go from the right, see how it's easy. If you go from the right, you just have a big space there and you can get it right away, much easier like that, called an S shape. Okay, number two. Number three, 
if you have a narrow aortic, okay, if you have narrow aortic, a lot of clot, this one, don't deploy the device completely. Because if you device completely, this compresses the contractor limb, it'll be very hard to cannulate. So what happened, which usually we do it in the normal EVAR, we just cannulate contractor limb like that and we stop. The moment we get to the contractor limb open, they will stop. So we keep this one collapse until we get to the limb. So this is very important. We don't deploy it completely, which we do, I think, routinely here. You see, if you keep it collapsed, it will be very easier for you to get through it. Number four, it is the most important part. You have to have multiple kind of the catheters, guys. You cannot just work with one catheter because every patient has different anatomy. The device will land differently. So you cannot like do a case I have only vertebra or Bernstein or Vanshi. So you have to have multiple choices. Cobra, Jodkins, multipurpose, implants left to right, uh, one and two. So everyone is different, okay? So you have to have on the shelf enough catheters, very important. The other options, if you don't have a lot of catheter, you don't want to waste money, like you work in a private, like, you know, hospital, the best way to get a big tail with a long sheet. Because if you put a big tail in the, a big, big tail going to use it for angiogram anyway. So you're not, you know, wasting more catheters. So use a big tail with a long sheet, but you have to use a long sheet. And then when you pull the tip, the tip will change the, 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 the shape so you can have multiple uh, shape. The other option to use the uh, uh, Destino, but this is very expensive. We don't use it. Uh, so don't even think about it unless you have too much money. Uh, where is, but I should give you the big tail. Oh, I don't know why I don't have the picture. So again, guys, what you have, you have a big tail is around it. And you have a long sheet. So you push the sheet all the way to the tip of the big tail. Then you pull the big tail back. So when you, be, you, when you pull the big tail back, the curve of the big tail is going to opening up slowly. So you have a different angulations, you know? Then you have angulation like that, then like that, and then like that, and like, like that. Because it's like, it's angulated like that, and this is a sheet. So when you pull, it's going to open slowly like that. So it depends how much. The more you, up, you pull it up, the more you have less angulation. You want more angulation, you go down, give you more angulation. You want to go down, more angulation. You want less angulation, you just push it up. So this way you can control the tip and you have, you can get an easy cannulation. And this is very, you know, useful uh, tricks. And we use it a lot and help us a lot in the cannulations. Use a big tail with a long sheath. We talk about it. Okay, what about this one? Uh, this one we ah this is what kind of a catheter you need to use. This is just talking about different catheters. Like this one, you can use like a vertebra. It's very easy. You see, like you go there, you get the wire. But like if you have this one, you cannot use a vertebra because look at the anatomy here. Then you have to use Jotkins, you know, right or left. See Jotkins, you get the wire. The reason why you have to have a different catheter depend on your anatomies, okay? Or you can use implants. Uh, right and left, you see, it can give you the wire throat. Or again, you can use a, a big tail. Uh, we talk about it. What about tortuous iliac? If you have a tortuous iliac like that, sometimes it's very hard because you see all the tortuosity here make it very difficult to cannulate because you have no control because all tortuosity. So you need to straight up. So the best way is to put uh, like here, it'd be very difficult to go through these angulations. So the best way is to put a straight sheath like that. When you put a straight sheet, this will straight up your angulation and then cannulation will become very easy. Uh, this is a big tail. Uh, it's, not that, it's very similar to the big tail, but I'll just tell you how it works. Imagine this is a big tail complete or even in case with other catheters. So you have a long sheet. So the more you pull the sheet back, you have a less angulation, you have more angulation like that, you see? So from the same catheters, you are able to use one, two, three, four direction for the catheter to help you with the cannulations. So the same, you can use, you know, Jotkins or big tail and long sheet and you pull this one inside so the shape will change and it give you more angulation to able to connect the contractor limb. Uh, the second thing is very important to have a multiple, uh, uh, multiple C-arm view. Because remember guys, what you're seeing is a, a 2D and we are really, we're dealing with a 3D, you know? What the original is recommendation is that you do RAO 45 degree, Okay, and then after that, after you, so you do R, REO 45 and you see where the wire is. So you think you are in the right spot. So you stop at this level 
and then you do LAO now, 45, and you see how far you are from there. So what happened now, you fixed it to the right direction. Hello, you know, you try to get it now, you fix it here. Then you go back RO45 and then enjoy the wire will go through it. So this is one of the tricks how you can go, uh, do it. So RO45, then LAO, then you fix your wire and then you go back and then your wire must be will go inside because you took like two view AP and laterals, like a 3D. Um, this is another one called orgo uh, method. I never really use it, but you can use it. What they said is that you're an AP. You see, this is a, this is a catheter. This is a vert catheter, okay? So you take the catheter tip until the catheter project as a straight line. So you, you twist the verb until it become like a straight line, okay? So in AP. So you see how it looks like a straight line, the verb. Then what happened then, like here, then you say to rotate your 90 degree, your uh, C arm, okay? Uh, rotate the catheter tip to gain the longest oscillating projection of the catheters. Then in, in, in the 90 degree, you turn it will become completely curved. And then you advance the wire and usually will go there right away. Again, I never really use it. I just read about it. So again, you put an AP 90 degree, then you go 90 degree and rotate the catheters where it becomes like completely like curve against the first one. Then you push your wire, it goes through it. That's what they claim, you know? Um, so this is one of the tricks. Second thing is that, yeah, let, let's go next one. Uh, then what, how you do uh, tip number seven, conventional versus ballerina deployment, okay? You know what ballerina, when we cross the limb, where the convention straight limb, how we can decide that? Look at this one here, okay? You look at the limbs are parallel, okay? So this one is very parallel, so you put standard. If you put a ballerina like that, this will be suffering because your wire goes this way and you put ballerina, you cross them, look where, catheter, look where you create. Or if when you put it in the normal positions like that, will will can you it in no time, it will be very easy like that. They give you another example, but when the wire cross each other like that, oh shoot. Like when they cross each other like that, 90 degree, then the straight will not work, it will be very hard. So in this way, if you go in the normal deployment, you see your cutter going this way because they're crossing each other's this way, 90 degree, then it will be very difficult to connect this way. But if you put it in ballerina, you see, it become very easy to cannulate, okay? Let's go right away and do ballerina. Two things guys you have to know about ballerina. Ballerina will uh, shorten your limb about one centimeters. So you have to be careful when you do your measurement, you have to remember that if you do ballerina, then you have to add one centimeter to your measurement because with the, this twist, you lose one centimeter from each limb. So don't be surprised why the limb runs short. So if you have, in your measurement, like the iliac would be only three centimeters and do ballerina, then the device will go inside the common iliac only two centimeters was not enough. So you have to be sure you have a longer device. The second thing, if for some reason you found after you bring the device that's long, the device is long and it may cover the internal iliac, then you go to ballerina trick. Then you do it intentionally ballerina to shorten the device so it will not cover the internal iliac. So you can use it either way as a bad or good way. The second thing is the guys, is doesn't always look simple like that here. Here it looks very simple because the wire go like that. You think, oh, it will go like easy. No, because remember guys, you have a device here in your way. So really, if they are in the same level, your device will be always behind because this one will push it back. So it does not always barina as simple as people think because they think all oh, the wire will go here, will go right away, very easy, you know? Not really. So because you, you go through other device, the other limb is here. Of course, never deploy this limb before you finish ballerina. If you deployed it, will be almost impossible for you to can you control the limb. Even if the wire go there, because the limb will be here pushing your wire away from the control limb. So in ballerina, no way you can cannulate, uh, 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 relieve the epsilateral before you cannulate. So very important. But again, when you can cannulate uh, as a contractile limb, 
Uh, it sounds in 2D easy, but it's not really very easy. The reason why I don't like to use ballerina much, unless it's really a lot of angulation, like 90 degree and the wires really cross each other's because of this reason here. Some people, they use it routinely because they think it's much easier. So again, you have to make your mind see it with difficulty and how the wire looks and everything. Uh, and you have to make your, uh, your decision. All right, the most important eight is to be sure you are inside the main body because imagine you're not inside the main body and you deploy the, the, the control limb, then you are in big trouble. So how you can do that? You do a big tail twist, we know that. We put a big tail in the main body above the flow uh, divider and then we twist it. So when you twist, it should be, means that we are inside. The other thing is you can hook the big tail at the flow divider. So what happens, the flow divider is here. So you put your big tail here, over, and you pull it. So if you are inside, the big tail will start straightening up like that, to so be like that opening up. If you pull it down and big tail still the same shape, that means you are not inside, you're outside, you know? So this is, uh, so you can tell this other way because sometimes the water is very narrow here, it would be very difficult to, uh, to twist it, especially if you have a big, big tail catheters. The other option, you just pull it down, try to put the contractor limb here and you're pulling from this one. And then you look and, and, and here at the flow divider, when you pull down the big tail should be going up now, like straightening up. If it doesn't happen, you mean you are outside. Uh, angiogram will not help. I see people do an angiogram. No way you can tell if you are in and out with the angiogram because just see contrast all off. So putting a big tail and shoot an angiogram, it's useless. So don't do it. Uh, mushroom, my brothers, they do a mushroom. What does that mean, mushroom? They put a reliant balloon uh, here between the flow divider and the contractile limb and they inflate it. If you take the mushroom, that means you are inside because this is a big, this is a flow divider. This is the main body is bigger than the epsilateral. So that means you are inside. If you're outside, you will not have a mushroom. Or the opposite, you can put the balloon in the tip of the contractor limb and in the aorta, and you get also a mushroom like here. You put it down and you inflate it. So the part will be inside the limb will be narrow and the one inside the aorta will be big. So give a mushroom sign. Uh, we don't use it much really, but this is something if you want to be sure you are inside the contralateral limb. Uh, the last thing, guys, is to go through the brachial or contractile limb. Uh, this is, again, if you go 20 minutes and you try everything, it doesn't work, then you have to stop. Don't waste more time. I see people stay for an hour. No, 20 minutes, then just forget it. Go brachial and ensnare it or, from, or go and deploy the epsilateral. Go deploy it. Go from here. Yeah, go brachial or go from contractile limb here. Push the wire. Go from here, snare it, and that's it. And then you go from down, you snare it, you pull it back, and then that's it. Then you can go uh, with that. You pull it, and then you put your epsilateral uh, uh, limb. This is the easiest way. Uh, again, you go break out, you go from uh, epsilateral. But this is be your last choice because you already deployed uh, the epsilateral completely. So now is this difficult to become more difficult to go from below. So now our only option to have is to go from here or to go from above, go from below, snare it and flip it over and then you put your uh, cutter through it. And again, this is, I'll do it after 20 minutes. If I don't get it, that's it. I'll go break them, you know, or, cont or contract a limb. It depends. All right, any questions so far? Maybe I'm going too fast. No question. Okay. Uh, the last thing, that could, okay, last thing is mild deployment. Okay. This is what's going to happen if you get it outside. You know, we have two kinds of uh, EVAR. We have called bimodular, which is the most we see now, which is uh, usually is Gore and Metronic. And we have a trimodular, which is three pieces. You see, bimodular is only you have a long, sorry, you have a long and short one. And this is Gore and Metronic. Whereas a trimodular is you have two short, one is longer than the hour, and then you have two other more pieces. So it come one, two, it come three pieces. Here come two pieces, okay? So what happened? If you have a bimodular, you're supposed to go this way, but sometimes you can go the wrong way behind it, and you go and deploy it like that. So what do you do in this situation? 
Any suggestion? Fem, fem, bye bye, Doctor, and you close. Yeah. You do fem? Fem, fem, bye bye, and we close and, this one. And what? Sorry. And we we try to close this one or just leave it. Ah, uh, just yeah. a second. If you leave it, bad. Bad, leave it. Oh, I'll go back here and crash this one and I'll deploy another one. So one option, but how are you going to crash it? So you, you get the to break here. here. And and can you read the common iliac? Then uh, crash it with the balloon. The device is here. How can can you read the, the wire? Is going to go inside. You can go break here. Okay, you go break the wire. Is here, right? Yeah, if you can go parallel to the to the graft. And then go here. And then how can you start from below? And then wire go here. And then you can snare it. How can snare it? Because this is occluding the the common iliac, and so your wire from below will go this way. And from breakout, we we'll go this way. We go uh, like sub intimal or behind the uh, graph. How you do that? You're right. But how you do that? One way, as you said, you go with a breakout, you go long uh, vertebral catheter, you go all the way here and you push it, you know? So you need a pushable you need a catheter. The wire itself will not go. So you need a long verb catheter. So you go all the way up to here and then you push it all up to here. And then you snare it from here and you take it out. And then, as you said, you push it to the side and you put a new limb. Or you can go from here with the verb catheter and you can go in this area here between both. Okay. This is will never, because this is just deployed. It's not like part of the wall. So it's very easy to go between them. It's not difficult. Just get your tip here and push the wire verb. And you see the wire going behind it and go here. And then, sorry. And then you get another wire from here and you snare it and that's it. Then you put another limb like that and you can crush it to the side, okay? Or the other option is you do a fem fem bypass, but you cannot leave this one open and get a big leak here. So you have to put a block. So you have to go from above, put ambulance block here and do fem fem bypass. The other options, if you are metronic, you can put inside a wartony iliac. If you do a wartony iliac, it's go here and go this way. This will close inside here. So I want to will close this limb and then you do fem fem bypass. So again, you see oh, how many options? So option fem fem was block, fem fem was a working iliac, or the third option to go cannulate here, push it to the side and put a new limb. Okay. So let's go to this one. When you have a three, what could happen wrong? You're supposed to go. This one, this is epsilateral, so no problem. You already have a wire. Contractor limb can go in the right position. It can go wrong, same what happened here, go outside. But the only thing different, this device that it can go here. I'm sorry. It can go in the epsilateral also. Because this is not like this one. You see, like this one, no way, because it's a long one. But this is short. So the wire can still go through here. So you have both in the same epsilateral limb. So you have two mistakes could happen. Here you can have only one mistake, but here you can have two mistakes. Either device out or the device in the epsilateral limb. Okay, because this is how they come. They come three pieces. One, two, three pieces. This is epsilateral, okay? Uh, how to avoid that? You have to take multiple view. Or the other option is that when you do try modular, after you deploy this one, go and put the epsilateral also here before you can hit this one. So this way you be sure you're not going here, but this could be a problem if you have a narrow aorta because if you deploy the epsilateral here, you may have a narrow area to manipulate here to get to the epsilateral, to contralateral limb. So just have to be careful when you use this kind of device. And this is what happened really with us in case I will show you guys. Uh, the reason why, because the, we always use tri bimodular, only in one case, it, they give us a tri modular uh, to use it. And uh, I was not aware that this could happen because we always, in back of our mind, this only thing could happen is out. We never thought this can go in epsilateral because we never use it. And the second thing, the patient was straight under me, was straight forward. So it was an easy case. So we're not really paying attention too much because we see it like straightforward case. We just like, you know, doing the case and everything. So exactly what happened guys, you see here. So this is a, we deployed the main device here. And the second problem with this device, usually with this is not cooked. 
issue with the cook, the epsilateral really is long, it's up to here. So it's mainly really it's difficult to go through epsilateral, but this new device, they are very short, they're very close to each other. So it's very easy to go from here or here. So this is how we deployed it. We're supposed to go here. So what happened is that by mistake, our wire went this way. And we didn't pay attention, we didn't know that because the wire went very easy. We're doing an AP position. We put the big tail, we, we twist it inside, we are inside. So we say, okay, it's easy. And we get this, so is exactly what happens. So you have two wires in the at all. We go there, we deploy them. And after we deploy them, we do an angiogram and say, oops, what happened? You have a big indolite here. And then we look, we see this limb is huge open here. And then we notice that we have this an issue that both limb went to the epsilateral. So what do you do now? What options? Yeah. Um, but Sammy, don't talk, you know the case. <laughs> okay. If the guys think, let them think. Uh, like Come on, guys, just anything. I managed to just give you five ways. I give you five ways to fix it. So, anyway, I'm not telling you have to do the way I did it. You have five ways to uh, fix it. So, anyone give me any way? Uh, like the contralateral limb, and uh, be mindful to that this patient will need the surgery later on. Uh, do that say again. So, you're in the war now. You know what happened. What are you going to do? Tell me, you're in the war. What are you going to do? I'll plug the contralateral limb and leave it as it is. If the two limbs that already deployed uh, are not stenotic or causing any problem. Okay, let me tell you, okay. So what you're saying that you're going to block here and leave everything the same, correct? Yes. What's going to happen? You get an limb ischemia because this one's completely collapsed. This one is dilated, it's okay, but this one collapsed, it's squeezed, you know? So when you're going to open, you're about kissing balloon, you're going to open one of them, which is usually this one. So you're going to no flow to the left limb, so you end with the ischemia. So what you have to do, you're right, but what you have to do plus what? Fem fem. Fem fem, yes. So what yeah. you do is that you go there, you put a block here, you balloon this one, so you can squeeze this one, you balloon this one completely, and do fem fem pythons, okay? This one yeah. option. Other option. Hello, we can... yeah, go ahead, Mahmoud. Go ahead. So, so we can uh, do like the previous uh, case, Dr. Samir, and put uh, a new limb in the contralateral, cannulate the gate again, and the crush this uh, wrong, uh, wrongly deployed uh, limb. This one, let me see previous. Oh, it's going back. Why is it gone? Ah, here. So you go from Hello? here and crush it. But how you can get your I wire? I go from the left. So the break down? Yeah, so as, as we discussed in the previous metal deployment, you as push it from down and you get the wire and you crush it. Okay, this is reasonable. Two, other option. Guys, you are a surgeon, right? So as you can convert to open, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see what the option. First, you can do an open, that's it. It's a big mistake, you know, you have uh, complications. This convert is open, you know. This is if you not don't have very good endovascular skills and you get to the tissue, always you can convert to the open, not an issue. Then you take everything and do our to buy, you know, our to buy fem. The second option, as we said, aortic iliac, like that, you put an aortic iliac instead of uh, instead of uh, plug because aortic iliac will close the contralateral limb, and then you do uh, you block this one. You don't need to block this one because this will be thrombosis anyway. And you do a fem fem bypass. So really, you just put our thing iliac and fem fem. You don't need to block this one because this will be included here. So we don't need this one. So just uh, our thing iliac and fem fem. This is number two. Other option, as somebody uh, mentioned, you go there, you put a block. You know, so you don't need to do our thing iliac. And just do a fem fem bypass. Okay. Number four is that somebody mentioned you go from above. You push the wire all the way between these two, you know, and then you start from below, and then you twist it and you put a uh, new uh, limb. You have to go break, okay? So this is number four. 
Number five, this is what we did. We did again, we went from here between both the wire here. We get the wire inside. Then we went from the contractor. We don't want to go break out because we're not prepared for break, break out. We're not ready. I mean, you can do it, break out, not a big deal. So went from the here over, we get the wire down, we snare it, flip it over, and same what we talked about before. And then we bought another limb, okay? And we solved it. The only thing you have to know, I didn't put a limb here. I put a balloon expandable cover stand like VBX. The reason why we know the limb for the EVAR are very soft and I need to squeeze this between the two limbs. So I, I found that if I put a limb here and you have a big limb here, because a big limb here in the iliac, I may not able to compress it. So what I use, I use two or three, I think, because long. Uh, balloon expandable cover stand. And this really helped me with a kissing balloon from both sides, squeeze it between them, and then we get a good result. And you can see here, this is epsilon limb. And here I'm getting the, the VBX, we put two or three, this compression angiogram. And this is after we finish, it looks very good with the device compressed between them. And you can see compression angiogram looks very good, both limb. And you see T here, you can see the compression is no endoleak, huge aneurysm, see, it's no endoleak. And you can see the device here, you see the limb. I think I have a fixed picture, let me see. Yeah, you see the limb, how it's here, squeezed, but you see balloon expandable stand, you see how thick this one? This is the balloon expandable stand, this is the main one, the epsilateral. And you can see the limb squeezed between both of them and no endoleak. And this is follow-up CT scan, looks very good. You see, this is balloon expandable. So we're able to get away from it. So always a solution when you get to trouble. But again, guys, always remember, open is always an option, you know? Don't get scared. I mean, it's the worst scenario. If you cannot do it, you don't have a block. You don't have, uh, you know, for some reason, always you can open and fix it. Uh, I think that's all. Simon, yes. Uh, if you are going to open it and revert it to open surgery, uh, would you cut the tent and leave the struts uh, on its as, as they are and stitch the aorta with the cut piece of the graft to the uh, uh, to the new mm -hmm. graft, or Not you, you really, just this remove is the whole just, device? Yeah, no, this way most of all take it whole because it's just place. It's different when you come for conversion after a couple of years. This is just deployed it, and the best way is to do what we call a syringe, you know, technique. You get a ten cc syringe and you get both limb inside the syringe and you pull it and you push the syringe up. So when you push the syringe up and you pull the two limb down, this will help the device to collapse again and you can take it out, you know? Uh, so we do that. So if it's like fresh like that, no, I, uh, most of it, I will take it out completely, yeah. But if it's come okay. after like years, then yes, I will leave the, the subarenal stent. I will not, I just cut them with the cutters and then I just suture the auto by fit. Okay, and what type of stitch would you use uh, if you are going to do it uh, with a piece of the EVAR device? And do you put Teflon uh, she, uh, no. sheets around the anastomosis? No, 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 you don't need that. Blacks, uh, you already have a fabric because especially if you know infection, if there's no infection, I leave a piece of the fabric inside. So you just cut, you don't, you cut like you leave like one or two centimeters of the fabric. And you switch your fabric with a, a water wall with a water by femme. So the fabric itself will be like a Teflon. So it's not an issue, you know. The problem if you start taking it out and stuck, and then you start pulling, then you get to a water tear and become the water very thin, you get to trouble. The reason why is always safer to cut the device and leave piece inside. Even with the infection, guys, the most important for you, remember, the first, the most important for you guys during the surgery, not to do a perfect surgery, to get the patient alive off the table, you know? So many times you have to accept suboptimal procedure to get the patient alive, because the worst thing is to do a perfect procedure and patient die on the table, you know? So even when we have an infection, yeah, they tell you book, you have to remove everything, but sometimes it's just stuck to the water. If you remove it, the water become like a paper, then you cannot suture, then the patient will die on the table. So even this one, I will cut a piece of it, leave a piece with the stress and just suture it. And then at least we get the patient alive and then always we can deal with that, which is not a big deal. Same when you have an AV graft, you know, for dialysis, 
when you come to the award with a breaker art, I always leave, leave like, I don't take it off the breaker art completely because breaker art become very small. And then you have to put a patch, it become very complicated. So just leave two millimeter of the graft, cut it and suture the graft to graft and suture the stump. It's better than take it out and suture the breaker artery. And the same here, always try to leave some fabric so you can suture it to it, you know? Uh, okay. Otherwise, I... yeah. And what type of statue would you use? Proline or CV? Which one? Does it make difference even? No, no not really. I, I just get used to uh, proline, three or three or proline. But some people they go as a BTFE stitch uh, suture. I never use them. I never like them. But this is just preference. But usually you use a three or proline. Yeah. But no, Thank no need. For, yeah, no need. No need for te Teflon. No. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, guys. So I think now you are very good with the sizing. Uh, you get a couple, you know, of the tips and tricks. Um, we'll see next week. Maybe you go back to a question so we can change a little bit. And then later on, we come back to the lecture again. All right, guys. Have a great night. And if any questions, send to me, my private, you know, what's up or to the group. And then we'll go from there. Take care, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.